into my health communication and my health uh, health assessment courses and why I believe this is crucial for our future health professional. So here's what we'll cover today. I'll start with an introduction to set the stage. We'll discuss the crucial need of ethics in healthcare. I'll introduce you to the Daniels Fund Ethics Initiative. We'll explore how I've implemented these principles into my courses. Then we'll dive into some exciting activities to get you all involved. And then I'll share some exciting outcomes that I've seen. And then we'll wrap up with key takeaways and future directions. And of course, we'll have time for a Q&A at the end. I'm scared. You should see it. Oh, maybe you're not showing it. What? What? Yes. Oh, you can't. Oh, you just see the the thing. Okay. So oh. Now I'll remove the the spotlight. And I'll I see. The, yeah. There. Okay, so that you should, now you should see it. Okay, great. Now you might be wondering why an athletic trainer is so passionate about ethics and health communication. Let me take you back to a high school wrestling meet a few years ago. I was the head athletic trainer and one of our star wrestlers was in a state qualifying match. He was slammed onto the mat so hard that when he got up, he was visibly dazed and confused. I evaluated him and immediately knew he needed to be pulled out. He was showing clear signs of a concussion. But here's where it got tough. The coaches argued with me. Even the athletic director, who was my boss, <laughs> got involved and he began pressuring me to let the athlete continue. So I was alone, I was scared, but I knew I had to stand my ground. This wasn't just about winning a match. It was about a young athlete's life and his long-term health. That day, I had to draw on every ounce of my ethical training and professional integrity. So this is the kind of situation that I want to prepare our students for, whether they go, they're going into health promotion, corporate wellness, or any other health science field. Now let's talk about why ethics is so crucial in healthcare. Did you know that over half of doctors and nurses reported observing ethical issues in just the past year? That's right, 51% of doctors and 61% of nurses are grappling with ethical challenges on a regular basis. But it's not just about the providers. One in five patients reported feeling disrespected by their healthcare providers. As someone who's been on both sides of the healthcare equation, this statistic hits really hard. The landscape of healthcare is evolving faster than ever. We're seeing new technologies, new treatments, new ethical considerations popping up almost daily. And with each advancement, the ethical stakes get higher. All of this complexity, all of these advancements, they all rest on one crucial foundation, trust. Public, Trust in healthcare hinges on ethical behavior. One ethical misstep, one lapse in judgment, and it's not just the individual that suffers. It can erode trust in an entire health initiative and institutions. That's why I believe so strongly in what we're doing here. We're not just teaching facts and figures. We're not just preparing students for their first job. We're equipping them with the ethical foundation they need to navigate complex situations, to make difficult decisions, and to be the kind of healthcare professionals that patients can trust with their lives. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. Whether you're going into health promotion, corporate wellness, or any other health science field, you're going to be in a position where your ethical decisions can change lives. And I want each and every one of my students to be ready for that responsibility. And this is where the Daniels Fund Ethics Initiative comes in. It's not just another academic program. It's a toolkit for navigating complex ethical landscape, the complex ethical landscape of healthcare. 
The initiative strengthens principle-based ethics, focusing on key principles like integrity, trust, accountability, transparency, fairness, respect, rule of law, and viability. In healthcare, these principles translate directly to protecting patients' rights and maintaining professional integrity and preserving public trust. So these are not just theoretical concepts, they're practical guidelines for making tough decisions in real world situations. So how have I brought these principles to life in my courses? Let's look at two specific examples. In my health communication class, which consists primarily of sophomores and juniors, I present the students with an ethical dilemma. So these aren't hypothetical situations. These are real world scenarios that healthcare professionals face, much like the wrestling match that I mentioned earlier. Then the students are tasked with applying the DFBI principles to the dilemma. And this isn't just about identifying the problem, it's about using these ethical guidelines as a framework for finding solutions. Then they dive into the research. They scour the literature to understand the context, precedents, and best practices related to their ethical dilemma. So this step is crucial because it teaches them to make informed, evidence-based decisions. And here's where it gets really interesting. The students work in teams to develop a solution. So this isn't just about solving the problem, it's about learning to communicate effectively within a team to negotiate different viewpoints and to come to a consensus. These are skills that they'll need every day in their future careers. Finally, each team presents their case study and solution to the class. This gives them practice in articulating complex ethical issues and defending their decisions, which is another skill much needed in the healthcare field. So moving on to my health assessment course, which primarily consists of juniors and seniors, the students are tasked to create and analyze their own ethical dilemma. So they're drawing from their own personal experiences, from their internships, from their career aspirations. And here's where it gets even more exciting. I've incorporated the modules from the NASBA Ethical Leadership Certification into the curriculum. Now you might be thinking, Hazel, isn't that a business certification? And you're right. But here's the innovative part. I'm translating these business ethics principles into a healthcare context. So why is this important? Well, healthcare isn't just about patient care. It's also about managing resources, leading teams, and making tough decisions that affect entire communities. By bridging the gap between business ethics and healthcare ethics, we're preparing the students for the full spectrum of challenges that they'll face in their future careers. But it gets even better. This isn't just some course specific certification that loses value once they graduate. The NASBA Ethical Leadership Certification never expires. Our students can put this on their resumes for the rest of their careers, proudly stating that they are ethical leaders, certified ethical leaders. In today's job market, having a credential like this can be a real differentiator. It tells potential employers that this candidate doesn't just have the technical skills, they have the ethical foundation and leadership potential to make a real impact. So throughout the course, students apply these ethical principles to complex patient scenarios. By grappling with these scenarios, our students are building the critical thinking skills and ethical reasoning abilities they'll need throughout their careers. What I love about this approach is that we're not just teaching ethics as a theoretical concept. We're giving students a tangible, recognized credential and ethical leadership and the practical skills to back it up. So we're, we're preparing them not just for their first job in healthcare, but for a lifelong career of ethical leadership in whatever health science field they choose. So now it's time for us to do a quick ethical pulse check. So if you take your phones out and scan the QR code, you are welcome to work in partners if you would like, but it is a 10 question quiz about ethical scenarios in healthcare. So let's really put your knowledge to the test. So how many of you scored seven out of 10? Eight? 
nine, ten. One person, well done. All right. I don't like those. I like these. All right. So question for you is how did this quiz change or reinforce your understanding of ethical decision making in healthcare? What do you think? Reinforce that ethics is not always bad. Okay. Right. Thank you, Dr. Whitney. <laughs> ethics is not always black and white, right? So it is challenging. So that's why these ethical principles are so important and are rarely taught in the healthcare context. So next I wanna move on to an activity that we can do all together. So my online folks need to bear with me while I switch screens real quick. Okay, so for our next activity, we're gonna navigate an ethical crossroads together. I'm going to Present a scenario, and as a group, we'll make decisions that will determine the outcome. So this is similar to the exercises that I have my students do in class, helping them understand the real-world implications of ethical decision-making. So here is your scenario. <clears throat> you are a health educator approached by Alex, a 16-year-old student who thinks that they might have an STI. Alex asks for help, but begs you not to tell anyone, especially their parents. School policy requires parental notification. What do you do? So here are our options. One, respect Alex's privacy and provide resources without notifying parents. Two, notify the parents immediately as per school policy. Three, encourage Alex to tell their parents and offer to mediate. I got three votes for number three. Online, three and one. Should we go with three? Yes, head nods are great. Good, okay. So I encourage Alex to tell their parents. So how do you support this? Option A, help Alex practice the conversation and offer to be present. Or B, give Alex a deadline to tell parents before you have to. Ooh, the chat is blowing up. A, A. We only have two options. So what do we think? A? All right, so during the conversation with Alex's parents, they become angry and blame you for not informing them earlier. What do you do? A, defend your decisions based on ethical principles, or B, acknowledge their concerns and offer to review school policy. B, okay. Alex resents the pressure and stops confiding in school staff. Consider the delicate balance of encouraging honesty without Coercion. Try again. Let's try again. Same scenario. So, what option would you like to choose this time? One, okay. Respect Alex's privacy and provide resources without notifying parents. So, you decide to respect his privacy. What are your next steps? Provide information about STI, free STI testing clinics, or offer to accompany Alex to a clinic yourself. Okay. A. Alex gets tested at a free clinic. The test is positive. What now? Encourage Alex to inform parents about the diagnosis or help Alex find treatment options without parental involvement. A or B? Oh, I'm saying A, B, A. Seems pretty split. What do we do? B, help Alex find treatment options without parental 
involvement. You face potential disciplinary actions for violating school policy. Consider the implications of prior prioritizing student trust over policy. One more time. What should we do? Two. Two? Notify the parents immediately as per school policy. How do you proceed? Call Alex's parents without informing Alex first, or do you inform Alex that you have to notify their parents? B? Alex becomes upset when you say you must inform their parents. How do you proceed? Delay notification and try to convince Alex to tell him, tell them. Notify parents despite Alex's objection. B. A, B, B. <laughs> what do we do? B? Parents seek disciplinary action against you for the delayed <laughs> notification. <laughs> so, consider the legal and ethical implications of your decision. Are you ready for the best route? So, we're going to encourage Alex to tell their parents and offer to mediate. We support this by helping Alex practice the conversation and offer to be present. During the conversation with Alex's parents, they become angry and blame you for not informing them earlier. What do you do? We defend our decisions based on ethical principles. And the family addresses the issues together, strengthening their relationship. Tough one, right? That's hard. I did. I did. There's a lot of options. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. There's so many different pathways that you can take, but what is the most ethical way of handling the situation, right? Well done, you guys did. Very good. So this interactive approach is similar to what my students do in health assessment. They create their own case studies following this process. So they identify the potential ethical dilemma in their future career. They apply the ethical decision-making tools. They research relevant literature and guidelines. Then they propose solutions and next steps. And then they lead the class in a discussion. So this is an example that's just flipping through of a student that uh, created her own ethical case study. And then you'll see the discussion questions at the end. So she did a fantastic job on her presentation. So this process enhances the critical thinking and prepares them for those real world scenarios that they'll face in their careers. So now you might be wondering, does all of this actually make a difference? And the data says yes, and dramatically so. I surveyed 255 students before and after taking these courses, and here's what I found. The importance of ethics started high. Um, sorry. Started high at 72.2%, but still increased to 94.9% after the courses. The confidence in ethical decision-making skills jumped from 45.1% to 87.8%, which is almost doubling. And then the one I got the most excited about was the confidence in their mediation skills, which was the biggest improvement from 34.9% to 82%, which is 134.8% increase. And their ability to apply the ethical principles went up from 52.2% to 91%, which was another significant boost. But the numbers only tell a part of the story. I wanna read you what one student uh, one comment a student left for me. 
I was always hesitant to call things out, but now I understand more of the importance towards saying or doing the right thing, regardless of the consequences. So this is the kind of transformation that I'm aiming for, creating confident, ethically minded healthcare leaders. The impact, oh, forgot about this slide. This is just showing 58 out of 255 students that went above and beyond and got their ethical leadership certification. So again, they're putting this on their resume. They're really selling themselves to whatever organization or corporation that they are applying for. And this is what they want. They want ethical leaders. They want to be able to trust their employees. So it, the impact of ethics education goes far beyond the individual. It creates a ripple effect. At the individual level, it shapes personal codes of ethics. Interpersonally, it, it improves patient-provider interactions. Institutionally, it contributes to more ethical organizational cultures. At the community level, it increases trust in local healthcare and societally, it strengthens the integrity of the entire healthcare system. So as we wrap up, let's recap the key points. Ethics education is crucial for healthcare professionals. It's not optimal, it's essential. Integrating ethics throughout the curriculum leads to measurable improvements in students' ethical awareness and skills. The Daniels Fund, Principles provide a comprehensive ethical framework that can be applied to real world situations. Interactive and applied learning enhances ethical decision making skills like the case studies and the ethical dilemma creations I mentioned before. And the impact of ethics education reaches far beyond the individual, it impacts the entire healthcare system and society. So looking ahead, here's what I would love to see happen. So expanding the integration across all the health science courses, creating a truly comprehensive ethical education would be amazing. I would love to develop interprofessional ethics modules that would prepare the students for the collaborative nature in healthcare. I would love to create some kind of partnership with healthcare organizations, for real world application of these principles. And finally, if I had the time and money, I would love to conduct some longitudinal studies um, on long-term impact on the ethics education on our graduates' careers and the healthcare field as a whole. But I just wanna say thank you for all your attention today. Um, I'm excited to hear your thoughts and answer any questions that you may have. Here's my contact information if you love to chat more. But I just want to leave you with one more thing. Remember that ethics isn't just about following rules. It's about being prepared to make tough decisions, stand up for what's right, and ultimately provide the best possible care for our patients and communities. Thank you all so much.